Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mics, proudly sponsored by CoolStuffing.com, CardHoarder.com, Alter Sleeves, as well as Twitch subscribers and Patreon supporters just like you. My name is Evan Irwin. We get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, MDG Nerd Girl. Hey guys, welcome back. Ruben Bressler. How's it going? What's up? Man, man of mystery. That's right. If you missed our pre-show, subscribers to this channel get access to our NSFW version. And, of course, patrons do as well. And we kick it off with our first pick in our giveaway. Get your chance at 50 bucks worth of anything at CoolStuffing.com by typing exclamation mark raffle in the chat. But subscribe first to get two chances to win. And support your favorite streamer with your suggestions at the end of the show to see who we raid tonight. That is, of course, thanks to our sponsor, CoolStuffing.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every single day. And, who oh boy, ladies and gentlemen... There was a Hasbro fireside chat that happened earlier today, which was all sorts of interesting. Um, there, there's there's some takeaways I think from it. Uh, some some interesting information that they provided to us uh, as a result, and you know some of the takeaways were pretty cool. Like for example, seventy five percent of tabletop play has returned to pre pandemic levels, and that's awesome. That's, that's great. Wow. Thing. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, and a lot of the stores, uh, a huge percentage of the stores that they surveyed said their business is growing or they're doing just as well they were as they were the year before. Um, some claws came out. Uh, you, you don't don't be misconstruing how Wizards does his business uh, because they said, "Hey, are you overprinting stuff?" And they said that person, um, CNBC or whatever, but we're not going to call them out exactly. Um, you know, we. Uh, those people don't understand our business and they were very clear or try to be very clear that all of their printing is done on demand and that there is no just like giant print run of so-and-so and and then they either just you know blow it all over the market or whatever it's based on orders based on people who want the product at the time and so you know with that uh they did touch just just oh so briefly, just a just a hint and a, and a nudge and on they went about uh, 30th anniversary, the 30th anniversary product. And in order to kind of get that properly kind of uh, framed here, they basically said, look, we discovered and or realized that a magic player or most magic players are in one of three buckets. You're a collector, you're a competitor, or you're a casual slash social player. And that the casuals and socials are way bigger than everybody else. Followed yep. by the collectors, followed by the competitors. And so okay. to make products for each of those three buckets, as long as they continue making products for those three buckets, they will be successful. And even the 30th anniversary product was successful in that they uh, decided to shorten the print run to increase the collector experience. Sure. Which is a way to say it, um, but does note, as we, as we also noted, that magic is self-correcting. And that if no one bought the product, then the product's going to be more rare and the people who did buy it will be rewarded as a result. Yeah, I actually have two things I want to touch on. One, I feel like the answer was disingenuous to the question. Mm. I feel like when they said everything is print on demand, if we're printing it, there's a demand. I, I think the question was rooted in product fatigue. That's right. maybe not the way the question was worded, mm. but yeah, your products are on demand, but I don't think that that, you know, according to the um, economy thing that came out from the banks mm. and all of that, I think that was more about product fatigue than it was actually the like oversaturation of the market to magic products. Cause we haven't necessarily seen that except for like the Baldur's Gate product, right? That nobody really wanted. But for the most part, like I don't have, I, I don't hear stores talking about like, oh, I have too much brother's war. Like I just can't move it. I mean, for the most part, boxes go up in value over time and people kind of want them. So I think it was a a, Wizards was sidestepping that question very well. The other thing is to increase the collector's experience. I feel like that is code for this was not popular. It was not well received. And so now we're just going to reward the people who did buy it by making it way more expensive. And maybe you guys will learn your lesson and buy this product next time. I mean, that's a yeah. takeaway. I I like those interpretations. I think, well, certainly I agree with the first one. Um, the second one is not something I considered, but does sound like the right takeaway from the situation. Hmm. How else are you improving the collector experience other than making it more collectible? 
right? which Making just means more expensive, right? Yeah, right. that's just a way to say we're, we didn't sell a lot. Yeah. Now, they did go on to some interesting stats. There's over 10 million registered players on Arena, which is neat. They are about to put Arena on Steam, which is going to be a whole new market. Like, yep. you know, that they've been working on. They got us on, you know, they got Steam on, or they got Arena on mobile, which was huge to get this on Steam would also be huge uh, and fantastic. They talk about hybrid players that are being the most satisfied, the people who play paper and digital, that, you know, they just get the full magic experience. They get the goodness of the digital. They get the, you know, actual tactileness of the cards. Uh, they get the collectability aspect of it, or of having the cards while also having the, you know, quick play, the thrill of a digital experience that can go really quickly, um, which I thought was neat. And it's it was yeah. cool to actually hear them kind of say, look, these are our customers, and this is how we're targeting them. And it has been fairly successful so far. Granted, they didn't say a word about the gigantic disaster that was the Baldur's Gate set, which it was a gigantic disaster. But they did point and say, universe is beyond, universe is beyond. Have you heard about 40K? 40K crushed it. 40K fans loved it. We can't print enough of the 40K decks. That was like actual word for word. They can't print them fast enough. And so uh, what I was saying, we were talking about in the pre-show, is that we're headed for Lord of the Rings. And for Lord of the Rings to be a modern only and back set, to be a historic only and back set, granted, Baldur's Gate is a heavy cloud, but I think <laughs> yeah. Lord of the Rings being an external IP, they're really going to push it. We're going to have Modern Horizons 3 for all intents and purposes, and God help us, what the One Ring is going to do, I don't know, but I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Sorry, guys. One quick second. The heater turned on, and my balloons are now shaking and making a ton of noise on... Audacity, sorry. One you got oh, it. Okay. Oh boy. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, I don't. I mean, birthday balloons, right? So, well, yesterday was. She said, if I recall correctly. I know, and she says she's old now. And I, you know, I, I did the bad thing, and I asked her her age. I shouldn't have done that. One of the worst. Top ten worst co-hosts. How dare I? But yeah, so overall, you know, the the idea that this was going to give us any, you know, closure, I think is a word that the people have thrown around, um, that this was going to somehow explain things, this, this was someone to somehow Sorry, shed. Guys. It's okay. No, you're good. This is going to Birthday somehow. Balloons. Yeah, this is going to somehow shed some crazy light on what Magic 30, 30th anniversary meant for the company and what they're doing in the future. It was very rudimentary. They they basically explained what the game was to start the phone call off. So that's kind of who they were talking to. Um, right. And ultimately, like we were talking about as well, they really want to make D and D make the money. Like. They've made a lot of money off Magic. You know, granted, they've they've probably turned all the little, you know, all the little knobs they can for now with between the secret layers and the collector packs and the all this other crap. Um, but for D and D, Ruben, how do we actually get non dungeon masters to give Wizards of the Coast money? How does that work? Yeah, boy, that isn't that the billion dollar question? Um, it is. The game's not just not well set up to monetize itself. Um, the game was certainly not invented to sell copies of itself. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need, if you want me to, if you want to tell stories around the campfire, you don't need to buy campfire fifth edition. Like <laughs> you don't, all you need are some dice and some pens and mm -hmm. that's about it. Like you don't need anything for D and D. Mm -hmm. So as a company, it's difficult to monetize. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good answer mm -hmm. for how you monetize Dungeons and Dragons. Some of the things that they've done are, uh, Wizards of the Coast did purchase D&D Beyond, mm -hmm. which is the online digital tool set for Dungeons and Dragons. Right. Um, and the subscription service idea for that, they don't currently have a subscription service. You have to actually buy the digital books. Um, well, it's kind of both, a, isn't it? Like you have a well, master a account or something and then... Well, I, I have a, a... Because I've made shows for Wizards, mm -hmm. I have a master account. But most people are, do not have a, a subscription or are able to get that sort of thing. Yeah, you um, can't buy that. That's only for people. It's sort of like no, the uh, well, I'm using like the content creator weekend. No, no, I, magic. I understand what you're saying. What I'm saying is they label the dungeon masters accounts as master accounts. I'm not saying you're like you're. Oh, your that's God right. Thing. Yes, yes, yes. They're hero I accounts and there's master accounts. And the master accounts, if they buy the book, they can share with hero accounts. Right. But it doesn't work the other way around, and you don't I get access. I understood what you were 
saying. Right. And yeah. it's okay. I'm just, you know, but ultimately they're trying to say, if you play D&D, can you please give us a subscription fee? And I think all the players are right. going like, for what? <laughs> right, but I've never had to do that before. All I do is I tell stories with my friends. Right. The dungeon master buys the book, right? Uh, which has always been the problem for D and D getting monetized is they come out with an adventure, right? Mm-hmm. We come out with Wild Beyond the Witchlight or Storm King's Thunder mm-hmm. or anything, and the DM buys the book, right? But that's t- between seven people playing or five people playing. That's one book sold. Right. How, like, how do we get to a point where everyone who plays the game buys something from us? Because right now, it's the dice retailers, right? It's mm-hmm. the mini manufacturers. Right. It's the map and uh, terrain tile creators that are able to make more monetization because they're adding more accessories and they're – the part yep. those parts of the game are more personalized and you want more pieces of them. It's a really hard question for Dungeons and Dragons for how to monetize that game beyond just selling the IP and being in Stranger Things and making a movie. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing that I don't understand is that the question is, is like Evan said the question like, hey, how can we get you guys to give us a subscription fee? Mm-hmm. But we have no desire to give you any sort of content we don't want to give you rental books for your subscription fee. We don't want to ha- have access, mm-hmm. give you guys access to anything that you're not purchasing in full, but we still want you guys to pay the monthly subscription fee. So like, I feel like it's not an issue. It's that Wizards doesn't want to do the thing. And also I would argue that giving the subscription, yeah, maybe people don't buy the book now, but now you have six people paying $60, a, you know, if everybody's doing $10 a month, that's 60 bucks a month. You know, that's more than one book and you're probably not selling one book per month to that group. Right. right. So like the money is there. They right. just don't want to deviate from the current method. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plus you're future proofing yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Like I had a bunch of fourth edition books that I didn't need. Like, you know, I've got all these, um, there are people out there that have got three, five books and AD and D books that they don't want or need anymore. Whereas if I have the digital tool set and we move to one D&D and we move to Ka- Tasha's called and everything and they eventually come out with sixth edition, I don't have this giant pile of now defunct. Right. Unusable books. stuff. Uh, so I, I think that it's an interesting question and I don't have the answer. And I hope that they find somebody smart enough with enough experience to be able to figure that out. You know, they did mention there's a Transformers movie people are excited about. Uh, they did mention that there is the D&D movie coming in, I believe, April at this point. Um, it keeps getting delayed, which is the most D&D thing that it could mm-hmm. possibly happen. I swear to God, if that movie is just a giant end joke, that's the way it works. It's going to work and it's going to make money and it's going to be a lauded, you know, classic if they literally just put their tongue in the cheek the whole time. Just like be mm-hmm. completely ridiculous, completely over the top. That would be awesome. Um you know, but ultimately, they did not mention the uh, Magic Netflix show. Uh, that hasn't that hasn't gotten a whisper in mm-hmm. like a year and a half. Remember, Brandon Routh was going to be, you know, Gideon or something. And they had some test footage or whatever. And it was like, yeah. wow, that looks. And then Arcane came out and then the cyberpunk thing came out. And then it's like, oh, man, we don't want it to be bad. So off we go. Yeah, I was not surprised that it got delayed after. Uh, Arcane, because Arcane was so good. Mm-hmm. So I was right. hoping it was like, all right, well, let's let's hope that they are now stepping up the game a little bit to compete in that market, mm-hmm. especially because like Rune Terra is a thing, so like some brand loyalty things going on there, c- competition. Mm-hmm. But then you're right, there was just nothing after that. So I don't know if it's like, well, maybe we can't compete, so maybe we scrub this whole thing, or maybe it, it also we can't put it all on Wizards, right? Because it's like largely on Netflix. I don't know if Netflix had the rights to do the thing or if Wizards is doing it and then letting Netflix air it. So there's a chance that it could just be on Netflix's plate and they've just decided, yeah, this IP is just not as good as what we have currently going. Well, from what I understand, um, you know, and this is talking to some people on the back end of things, um, that Wizards does have a say in it and that if they're not happy with it or, you know, confident in it, that they're like, we'd rather not make it than make something we think wouldn't be good enough. So and right. Arcane, if you haven't seen Arcane, oh my God, it's amazing. Um, it's it's one of those shows that's way better than it like deserves to be kind of thing and really shows you what you can do with video game narrative that actually impacts and hits you on an emotional level and like mm-hmm. is really cleverly written. I mean, there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff going on in Arcane. 
I don't know if I don't know if I agree with the th- this is not a riot show, but like riot has really, really done their homework when it comes to like stories for characters and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just a MOBA game, but mm-hmm. like they have pages and pages of research on every character. They do animated shorts every time a new character launches. Like Wizards, we get a new planeswalker and we're like, who is this? And like, there's yeah. not a lot of resources. Riot is not like that in any way. They've yeah. got mountains of it for you to really get involved. Mm-hmm. Even the card game, they are doing a ton of mini shorts that show all the characters doing stuff within the world of that expansion. Mm-hmm. And there's just like infinite stuff. So I think that it's much easier to make a storyline like Riot is doing compared to something like Wizards is doing. Mm. I mean, they treat their characters in ways that, you know, Wizards has never treated theirs. You know what I mean? We've never gotten like crazy wild animations when a planeswalker shows up. We don't even really get animations anymore for cards, which makes me really sad, honestly. Um, that's it. We got to keep moving here. Let's move on here to Gather the Townsfolk. Thanks to our sponsor, CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. Check out Card Hoarder and tell them we sent you, and we appreciate them. Um, there were some interesting dates that shifted. Um, Phyrexia, all will be one. Uh, you know, good, bad, or ugly. Maybe it's, it's, it's from all the feedback of people going, my lord, you release so much stuff all at once. Uh, they are changing the schedule here and releasing it a week later. Um, so suddenly, instead of late January, the pre-release is going to be the first weekend of February uh, with the tabletop release officially on the 10th. Um, so yeah, and we'll get our first look of the set, like sort of the last thing wizards kind of does before they like sort of run off for the end of the year. Cause they don't really do anything in the last two weeks of the year, um, is to show us like what we can be looking out for come January. So I'm excited for it. I think the set's gonna be great. It's important okay. to note that we've flipped back to digital first again. It's true. Yeah. So we're like, we're not getting a ton of like consistency here. They've kind of flip flopped multiple times. Well, no, no, wow. the, the pre-release events are paper events. Those come before the digital release. Yes. So, and you can buy all the card, you can buy all the paper products uh, on that pre-release weekend uh, throughout that time period. So, uh, so right. So, you, I, so I could have swore, wasn't the digital release after the regular release this last time? Yeah. And it's this Was way, it? and it's this way for Phyrexia as well. Yeah, so the paper no, it says tabletop releases on the tenth. I, right. I I thought the pre-release events was after the pre. I thought the arena events was after tabletop release. Right. What I'm saying is the the remember. tabletop release that you're talking about at this point is the pre-release oh. because all the WPN stores can sell all of the paper products as of February third moving forward. So, Got it. So, so it's not a pre-release. You know, you can play in the pre-release events, but you can also buy all of the products at the same time. At WPN okay. stores. So that's they're where they're calling it a pre release because they've called their pre release for 20 years. Yes. What they're calling a pre release is the release. The release. So at what's WPN tabletop stores. release? Yeah. What is tabletop release in this case? Uh, Amazon and Walmart and Target. Like, got it. Big box stores will get not the tabletop at all. Not tabletop <laughs> at all. <laughs> when you said pre release, what you meant was release. What I meant was WPN when store release. When you said. Tabletop release, not you. I'm right. saying Wizards. Wizards. That's that's their fault for the. They graphic. mean Walmart. They when mean you Amazon. Said tabletop. What you meant was the tables in Amazon. Yes, Amazon gets <laughs> okay. to ship their stuff. We and, need to we need to work on our nomenclature. Right, and it's cool, and it's well, it's all it's also a benefit that they give to WPN stores and to yeah. premium stores like Cool Stuff. So you know, this is one of my sort of my job is to try to communicate that if you buy your stuff on Cool Stuff Inc., we will ship it like the day before the pre-release yep. so you can get it on the actual pre-release Friday, like that day. We can do that now. That's the first time they've ever let us do that, starting with Brothers War, and now we're a little bit ahead of it. And so my job is to try to get that message out there. Like, look, you can get your Phyrexia cards like ASAP now in ways you've never gotten them before. Got it. Which is cool. Tabletop release day is basically the date it becomes legal and standard is also what I'm... Basically, what yes. Pharmacist judge said. And okay. if you guys use code magic mics, you get 5% off. There you go. We do have that Sick. code set up if you want to check it out. Um, so they released a new uh, Heroes of the Realm card, which I thought was quite rad. These are the ones they give away uh, only to employees, um, but they're super duper cool. Uh, this is the uh, Ursta Friend to All 
a Wooberg legendary planeswalker with five loyalty that can also be your commander. For plus one, you make a one-one human wizard. That's all colors. For minus three, you choose a card from among enlightened tutor, mystical tutor, booster tutor, imperial recruiter, and worldly tutor. You make a copy <laughs> of that card and you may cast it without paying its mana cost. And minus eight, you get an emblem of at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control twenty or more wizards, you win the game. So. If you, work at, if you work at Wizards, this could this could be yours. Now, which team got this? I'm not exactly sure. There was another one that was spoiled that was for Universes Beyond. and Right. The Universes universe. Beyond team got the Universes Beyond Planeswalker. Which makes Commander, sense. I did see that one. Cool. So how much do we think these are going to be if it's only di- like a specific oh, team getting them? Oh, yeah. The, the, I mean, these or, are insane. Yeah. The earlier ones, I think fifteen to $20,000 are generally where they go. Um, yeah. So this is like basically the business is giving you a bonus yeah. in, in a way. Um, those are some of the sales I've seen so far. So they are what the market will bear. But generally, I've seen them in the 15, 12 to 15,000 dollars. Right. There's maybe you know, however many exist in that department. Maybe let's say a dozen or something, but like not a lot. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> oh, my God. Which is amazing, you know, which is great. Um, what's the problem? What what is happening? What's happening? What's going on? Is everything all right? You feeling okay? I do not understand. <laughs> it's a bonus, right? This yeah. is a Christmas bonus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell that to the IRS. Well, yeah, well, that's a good point. That's what I'm saying. How is this? Ha- how is this? Oh well, my god! This is the judge the judge foil program all over again? Yeah. The, right. Do you, under, you remember how Wizards does not in any way whatsoever acknowledge the secondary market? Uh, right. These are promotional materials. They are giving their employees. They are not in. These are not in exchange for work. And that was the problem with the judges. They were right. given that promo pack in exchange for being a judge at the event, as if it were you know compensation. This is a promo. This is you did a thing, and the the company made a whatever. And if the secondary market buys at fifteen k, then we don't know. So, we're just so a they- million dollar company walking through the earth. So can we just? Can wizards just say, okay, we're going to pay minimum wage to everybody, but every quarter you get a nice promotional bonus. You don't kick- And that's just, <laughs> it, wink, wink, it's worth $20,000. You don't kick the IRS hive too hard. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I paying feel like people this salaries, is kicking it hard. Paying people, again, this is not compensation. This is just a cool promo they're getting for working at wizards, whatever. Anyway, we need to move on. Point is, there is a new tournament series coming to the West Coast. The of that little bucket, Ooh. the smallest bucket is the competitive player. So let's talk about a new competitive series on the West Coast. So Laughing Dragon uh, MTG uh, is making the Magic Experience tournament series, which I thought was super rad. A three-day quarterly event taking place in locations along the Western U.S., which is neat. Um, and their first official event is in Oakland which is pretty cool, cool March 31st uh, through uh, Sunday, April 2nd. So if y'all are out on the West Coast, I know you've been dying for a circuit. I've heard nothing but like, why don't we have these cool things? Well, this is the type of stuff you want to show up for if you want it to exist. I love it. That's great. I'm yeah. super looking forward to that. Yeah. Nerd Girl, you, uh, you feel like you might want to get into the experience? Um, I've Place actually been to the, the start of this circuit and... I don't know how I feel about this one. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve uh, my talking points until t- next pre-show. No okay. problem. That's understood. That is a <laughs> okay. We are cool. I with will that. say that it is it is um, for having been on both sides of this, both having lived on the West Coast and also having worked for a company that ran tournaments that didn't want to run tournaments on the West Coast because there aren't a lot of people out here. Mm -hmm. Um, There's like a dividing line in the United States, and 80% of those people live to the right of it. And of the people that live to the left of it, like 60% of those people live in Los Angeles. So it's very difficult to get a tournament series to work you know, west of the Mississippi. And I wish them the best of luck. And, and I hope this is successful. And when they come to L.A. or they come to Southern California, I'll be there. Thank you so much, Jamie Topples, for the raid. We appreciate it. Hey. Now, uh, so more around uh, your world, Ruben, here. We have some judge promos that are super cool. Uh, the first being Painter's Servant. Hey, hey. My, bo- my boy. That's your boy. Look look at how they made your boy all pretty my in the Rodney retro soldier. frame. Yeah. 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 I love me a painter servant. I 
Uh, I love this. And they used the original art. Mm-hmm. They gave it the old frame and, of course, the, the delightful owl. Um, and it's it's good to see Painter Servant uh, in the old border. And and this is a great one for the Judge Academy. Um, I believe Painter Servant is, is still not legal in Commander. Is it still um, banned, unfortunately? I believe it is still banned in Commander, which is for the best. Um because nobody likes Painter Grindstone in a singleton uh, format. It's a, it's a legal on Commander. Uh, based oh, is it? On, based okay. on, yeah, huh. based on Scryfall right now. Maybe Grindstone's um, the one that's banned. But, I mean, certainly the Shifting si- Sky Change Colors deck is very fun. Do you know um, how much it's worth these days? I don't. It's an $80 card. Wow. This is likely the most expensive, non-reprinted card that exists now because i think the previous one was no mercy and they finally reprinted that and huh. painter servant didn't get one and wow um wow. the other judge promo is mika saint lattice when we have the 80 dollars card why don't we just give him a 40 dollars card right that's behind another it? another great one yeah this will be at least probably a hundo plus because it's the old border it's judge you know program only yep. i think it looks great Formats in which this is legal, uh, uh, this is a great thing to go get with your four-drop Karn. Um, just sort of lock up the game. Mm-hmm. It's a really good one. Yeah, Mika St. Gladys is a heck of a magic card. Banded modern, but it is legal in Legacy and, uh, and Vintage and whatnot. So they do crazy mm-hmm. stuff with that thing. Um, all right here. So let's move back into gathering our townsfolk. Do we have any other stuff? Now, Glenn Jones, uh, a hell of a dude. Uh, really funny guy. I actually did some, yeah, absolutely. Uh, did some stand-up comedy one time, amateur-wise, and got an applause break, everybody. Yep. And I'm telling you, if you don't understand what that means, that's like the highest, for, for somebody on their literal open mic to get an applause break? That was wild. Yeah. Anyway, Glenn's great. Um, but he's also leaving Wizards, unfortunately. Um, he stewarded Commander. He launched Universes Beyond. He was building Spell Slingers. Um, but he is moving on to help work on Marvel Snap, something Ruben knows a ton about. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Glenn was uh, the person who was my sort of mentor when I came into Star City Games. Mm-hmm. Um, we did the same position, which was the event coverage coordinator position uh the the job that was most recently shepherded by nick miller Mm -hmm. uh and uh he's just smart caring thoughtful um incredibly analytical thinker and the fact that he was hired by wizards was of no surprise to any of us and the fact that he's moving on to another game where he will be a valued employee is no surprise to us anywhere. Uh, Glenn Jones is is one of the best, and I wish not, him nothing but the best of luck. Yeah, Wizards is... I, I've known a lot of R&D people kind of slowly but surely go out to other companies, whether that's now Marvel Snap or Bungie. Um, yeah, I mean... It's tough. Wizards is great, and Magic's fun to work on, and everybody loves Magic, but... I don't think they pay as well as most of the other companies. Agreed. I have definitely heard of the magic tax, which can exist. And look, I can love magic all day, but if there's a big old number on the other side of the, you know, other side of that hill, I, I might want to go look. Yeah. Um, so that said, uh, for those who happened to play arena yesterday, it got completely demolished and like died for a while and was really bad with matchmaking. And they Hmm. have given you a code of repair and recharge to get 3000 XP and a thousand gold, which gave me a a ton of levels on the mastery tree and all that stuff. Wait. So if I go to the store, yes, go to the store, top right repair and repair and recharge one word. Yeah. No spaces. Yep. I get three thousand gold. You get and three thousand experience. No, three thousand XP and one thousand gold. Right, I said one thousand gold, oh. and so one thousand gold, three thousand XP. Yep, that's it. Wow, cool. Great. Yeah, easy to do. Free. Thanks, Wizards. Just because, just because it pooped the bed. Just because it pooped yep. the bed, and I'm right. okay with that. Cool. And just trying I'm to okay spread the that. word. So uh, just so you guys know, as we move Very on cool. here to our desperate ravings. Uh, check out our altar sleeves. Support the show by using the code Magic Mics for five percent off anything in the store, including a set of exclusive sleeves featuring the Magic Mics crew at altersleeves.com/slash Magic Mics. Uh, so not for the red zone, for the desperate ravings. Uh, I mean, now, we can get in an argument if you want. to. If we had to. Um, now I don't know exactly the the countries that had flags as sleeves in arena. 
But uh, Wizards has said uh, that several years ago they were able they they did give away country specific flag sleeves, and you're able to get them from on sale every once in a while. Um, but they're going to be restricting how those country specific card sleeves appear in the game now because they feel it has impacted some players' ability to enjoy the game. Now, what flag really would would impact your ability to enjoy the game? Is Ruben's confusion really real? Now, what? I don't know if, for example, Taiwan had its own flag hanging out in Magic Arena, as that's a whole thing. I'm I'm assuming it's just Russia and Israel, right? Is it Russia like, and Israel? Yeah. Okay. That like Russia, Israel. I mean, there are other politically charged countries. Mm-hmm. The Ukraine flag comes to mind. Yeah, Soviet flag could definitely do it. Now, the players who had them... Soviet is not a flag. It is a thing. Russia (laughs) Russia is is a flag. flag. You're right, you're right. Now, players will receive 300 gems. Soviet flag in Magic Arena. I see a word... Let's get get Zaire. Let's get the Zaire flag. (laughs) Look, man, I see words and I just... They went through my head. The point is, players will receive 300 gems per flag sleeve in their collection when this change Mm -hmm. goes live. You can still... Use them for yourself, but they will not show to your opponents. It will just show the generic magic bag. So Okay, that's fine. It's, I, a, it's a thing. It's I'm a okay thing. with that. I'm but, okay with it as long as that was the initial price. I don't know what the price was. I can't right. remember. I feel um, like that price is low because it's only a pack and a half worth of gems. And I feel like the sleeves are usually quite a bit more than that. Mm-hmm. I, so say, I would I think, be interested to know if that's the right price. Hmm. Uh, either way, so here, here was something that... I don't know if it shocked me, but it certainly surprised me a lot. Um, the idea that Wizards is, um, and as I understand it, they have a storefront in Singapore that is a marketplace, much like Amazon is one in here in the UK and other places. Um, and they had a little promotion. And they said there's a full set of Battlefield mural tokens uh, that you can get as a result of being the top 10 spender on the website. Now, imagine if they gave away tokens, which could be worth God knows how much, you know, 100 bucks, $3,000. We don't know the market figures that out. But some amount of tokens that you can only get as being one of the top 10 spenders on this website. And how how bad, how exploitive, you know, is this like, hey, whales do what they want. Whales are going to go whaling. Throw in some chum and get your harpoons ready. And <laughs> let's see what happens. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with it. Also, I I get the shock of this. Mm-hmm. Like I understand the shock of it, um, but I'm all. I also prefer this to the tongue in cheek, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge of like our biggest supporters get a thing. <laughs> no, come our out biggest and fans, say, y'all, our big yeah, fans. Whoever gives it. us the most money gets a thing, and I <laughs> I, I think that that's a refreshing take. It's a take. Yeah. Um, and also, if you give them the most money, you should get a thing. Yeah. Like, I'm fine I, with all of it. I am happy that they are not saying that this is a Magic 30 celebration. Oh my Beyond God. that, I do not care. I like the transparency, Stop. and I think that's cool. The only thing that I think sucks about this a little bit is that it's only to one specific country or region. Mm-hmm. I think if you're going to do this thing, do it to all the things, right? Like your right. biggest supporters in the, in, you know, North America don't matter. And like, and even then I don't really care that much because they do this kind of stuff for regions all the time. So that's kind of normal. But I think that that is the only thing I would take away from this is like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. And, you know, they, they've they certainly, this is one of the most straightforward ways of explaining the promotion of sales that they want to get. Like, look, you pay me the most, I will get you this cool right. thing that you can't get anywhere else. So the whales know they're whales. The whales like, know yeah, how they whaling understand. they're whaling. Yes. If if it's a ten year old with their mom's credit card that like like some gotcha game or something, then mm-hmm. I'll feel bad. But that's not going to happen. Like that's like legitimately not a possibility. I don't think. Yeah. And if it does happen, then I'll feel bad. But uh, the way that this is phrased, I'm totally cool with it, man. This is business. It's also a bunch of product that they're going to probably resell and profit on anyways, because those people, the whales are, you know, usually buying that kind of stuff in in bulk. I would be a little bit more weirded out if this was like Arena Cosmetics or something Mm. where they were just like spend infinite unknown dollars to try to win a thing you might not win for product you'll never want or use and cannot resell. 
that's a little bit more scary. But yeah, let's have that conversation a couple of years from now. Um, yeah. That that said, um, it's it's wild, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so last little bit here, we have. Uh, I really don't like this story. We've literally covered something similar to this. I want to say like a year ago, two years ago. This is not our oh. first time talking about Rob Alexander and people having sent him products, usually dual lands, and them not hearing anything back. And I'm not trying to besmirch any bad names. I've met, I've interviewed the man. You can find an interview with him that I had with him, you know, with like the late two, the late 2000s at one point. Um, super, super nice guy. Super cool dude. And I'm not saying there's anything nefarious going on, but man, when someone sends you like a thousand dollar piece of cardboard, you, you're kind of going to need to keep up with the, with the, uh, you know, the communication there. And maybe it could be what some of people uh, had guessed is that, you know, maybe these rates are a little low. And maybe he got overwhelmed, which is certainly possible. I can't tell you how many Twitter artists, you know, I see who are just like, I got too many commissions and I'm so sorry, you know, and uh, it can add up fast. But I feel I feel bad for those who are trying to get, uh, you know, their dual lands and their cards back. Well, yeah, I mean, I would agree that that happens. But if I remember correctly, the story that this happened last time when we talked about this, Mm -hmm. the card was like a year and a half gone. That's not overwhelmed. That's your card is gone yeah. and I'm ghosting you. And I mean, I've read some people in the, the saying that they bought things off his website that they weren't shipped, you know, that they weren't sent. And that's its own other issue. Um, you know, so this is coming up again because he has a borderless dark depths in Dominaria United. Okay. Uh, or Dominaria Remastered, sorry. Right, right, Remastered. Uh, he also has Nantuko Monastery. He's getting uh, reprinted. And most recently, he's also got some Borderless Brothers War, Battlefield Forge, mm-hmm. and some other stuff like that. So he has had things printed recently that would cause this to come back up in the news. Right. And I hate that, again... This is not the first time, like, you know, we've talked about this. This is not the first time I've read this. Like, this has happened many times over the years in terms of people being very, very frustrated and going like, look, I don't know what else to do. You know, please, Magic Community, help me talk to yeah. Rob Alexander. I've seen Does it he many not times. Go to magic? Does he not go to Magic events anymore? He has. Uh, I have read someone saying they met him at a command fest, and I'm like, okay. I mean, he didn't exactly run for the hills or anything. Uh, he was a command fest indie, they said. So, okay. so there's that. And, and obviously, good luck to those who are looking for their product. Um, yeah, I mean, it I could say- be something as simple as, like, just careless bookkeeping. Like, cards just get shuffled in with other things, and you don't know whose was what anymore. And then once a thing is lost, you don't really know what to say. So maybe you're just not responsive. Like, yeah. I desperately want to give him the benefit of the doubt, I assure you. But, like, fool me, like... Four times, like yeah, just don't send him mail anymore. Just find stop, him at find him at Command cards. Fest. Right. Yeah, stop sending him mail. Yeah, stop sending him cards. Don't y'all. buy. And right. I guess don't buy stuff from his shop until you can figure out the mail system. <sighs> buy stuff from him at Command Fest. Yeah, go now. And I, I I would go so far as to say that like, if this is a recurring problem and he is stealing thousand dollar cards, then the community as a whole should buy less products mm-hmm. or none at all from him until at least he makes a statement. Yeah. And like absolutely. explains this was never sent. This was never received. Right. This- something. So we can at least give him the benefit of the doubt. If he's going to be cricket silence about all of this, he right. certainly knows it's, I would not buy products from him. Right. It's not a big deal to make mistakes. We are human. It happens, but yes. to explain them, to make someone whole who doesn't have what they have anymore, for example, or to make sure they get their stuff back, even if you weren't able to alter it, those are the types of things that go a long way because people understand mistakes, but they don't understand you just not saying anything. And then there's a black box and the black box is filled with bad, negative things. Um, so let's turn the corner here to the finisher. The game awards were this evening. And there were some winners that will definitely make fans happy. Marvel Snap won Best Mobile Game. Arcane won the Best Gaming Adaptation. And God of War Ragnarok won a smattering of awards. They won, like, everything when I was watching. Yeah. And while there are a wide swath of categories, I think we can do better. So tell me, what other categories would you like to see at Game Awards in the future, Ruben? 
Well, as a Wordle enthusiast, I'd love to see an award for best one-page game, mm-hmm. which, of course, would have been won by the New York Times crossword puzzle since the early 40s. Nice. Nerd Girl? Well, I would love to see him introduce a new uh, segment for best gotcha game, and that's why this punchline is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Oh my goodness, as a huge Counter-Strike fan, I'd love to see a best tactical shooter category. And of course, the best tactical shooter from the last year has got to be Pokemon Snap, y'all. Just, you snap those heads. Mm -hmm. Snap, 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 snap. True true story, just past a thousand hours playing Counter-Strike. Oh, wow. That's (laughs) a lot of hours. A lot of, I love Counter-Strike. It's a thing. But that does end another live episode of Magic Mics. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Nerd Girl. Thanks for having me, guys. See you next week. Thank you, Ruben. That's right. We're going to be going here to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsors, CardHoarder.com, and Alter Sleeves, my co-hosts, MTG Nerd Girl and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening, and hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, t- Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Or join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.